Hello, everybody. This is Stephanie and Chelsea, and we are the co-founders of CS Planners, and I'm so excited to welcome you to the, to the Celebrating Success podcast. We are your how-to guide for mind, business, soul, and I'm so excited because in this podcast, you're going to get to know us a little bit more, and I'm going to be honest because I feel like a huge part of why I was afraid to, to start a business is because you think of a business person as someone that's like really fancy, someone that's, you know, is like, you know, you, you kind of imagine them. Like, even if you Google business, like woman, you almost imagine this specific like look. Right. And I feel like even, even like, I feel like we've talked about this before Chelsea. And I feel like we are different than that. We are just, I feel like more of the average people that have a business and we want to help to get to know us so we can inspire you anybody out there listening to us to do the same to know that anybody can start a business you don't need to have all those fancy things just to start I I think it's funny you say that because today's like the first time since starting our business where I'm like wearing a blazer or like things I used to wear to my office job and but literally right before this, I know it's another Kelsey Taro thing. I'm addicted to her sweatshirts. They are the comfiest things. And literally, I don't even, I was wearing that all day and I switched to this and I don't know why, <laughs> but as you're saying that, I'm like, yeah, why am I so fancy today? Like what's going on? Yeah, that's not usually you, Chelsea. We're like, in don't our- worry. I still have my yoga pants on. <laughs> I have my yoga pants on too. Like that's what I mean. But like, it's, it's, I mean, it's okay. I feel like to get fancy, to have all those things, but it, I almost feel like when people think of like a business, pro- I was the same way. I'm not sure if it's just me that thought this, but like, when you think of a business, I remember before I started, I'm like, I can start a business because I'm not this, like, I'm not like a business person. I'm not like fancy I'm not, I don't have all those fancy things that's like I'm like I don't you know I and I remember starting with nothing so I'm like I can't afford all these like fancy things and then then but that's I feel like it almost made me afraid to start because of it we're like you know and I feel like because of us we're just so like laid back and we are successful so I feel like it almost like we're just going against like some of like what people usually think about business, like people a little bit, we're just ourselves. And we, that's what we promote to be like, to be yourself in your business, because you don't need to look this certain way. You don't need to be, if you want to be fancy, absolutely go for it, but you don't have to, in order to start a business in order to be successful in a business. So before I go on, if you're watching the YouTube video, you would have seen me lift my leg to show that I was wearing yoga pants. <laughs> I definitely pulled a muscle <laughs> while doing that. <laughs> Fine. I'll be okay. <laughs> but I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I do that? Anyway, the other thing is you and I always talk about how average we are. <laughs> and like, we really are, yeah. How like you and I, like, I feel like when I think of a business person, I feel like you had to have money in order to start a business. So like, thousands of dollars millions of dollars for some people and really when we started I I only had a laptop and luckily I kind of had a laptop but the truth is I only bought one because I wanted to play sims (laughs) so (laughs) literally maybe a year before we started Mm -hmm. I bought a laptop purely to play sims (laughs) (laughs) yeah like I didn't even like I had my laptop from like years ago that I I went to university and like I didn't I didn't really even use the laptop I did everything on my phone like I didn't really need it and the thing is like when we started a business I didn't invest like you know I didn't like pay all this ridiculous money but we still had like there's a lot of interesting and free resources out there and if you're just starting we have like make the check out and follow us on our youtube and and podcast and at like all this and and our blog as well because that's essentially like a, we can we're giving out a lot of free information too to help inspire you to get to that point to know like we are just average like people that are really successful. So no, I didn't have the money at first to, to really in, like to pay all this, to all these fancy things. 
And then as you start building your business, as we're more successful, it's like, okay, I'm going to try some more and start upgrading to those little things like Canva, for instance, that we, <laughs> that we have like, you know, Canva and like active campaign, all these other things that you start investing in. And I feel like all that's helpful, but to know like, yeah, we are just like, we're like, I feel like av- like more average. And I feel like that's almost sometimes good. I feel like the, I past me would have wanted to hear that because <laughs> it almost like kind of startled me in, in terms of like starting a business. Cause it's scary starting a business. I'm sorry. I, I want to add on, but you've said something that I can't stop questioning. What you did most of your university stuff on your cell phone. No, 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 no. I meant, no, like I meant business. No, I meant I used my laptop for university, but now, but I never used Oh, I thought you were saying like you had it for university, but you really just used your phone. And I was like, how did that work? Like, did you write papers on your phone? I only use now my cell phone. I don't use, I don't use, like now I use my laptop. Before a business, like in between that period of like university and and business, I only use my, like, I didn't use a laptop. Yeah. So it was just like an old laptop laying around, just collecting dust, didn't really do anything with it. Cause so I just used my cell phone. It wasn't until like, only, not for business or computer stuff, just for, you know, wasting time essentially. A hundred percent. I wouldn't have, if it wasn't my urge to have Sims, I wouldn't have had a laptop. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's, but, so it is, it. but like you said, it is possible to do things without it like all the networking and com- uh, communicating and connecting with people you don't need a laptop you you have your phone and even like if you're filming videos people think you need a fancy camera but really the cameras on your phone if you have a smartphone chances are those cameras are going to be better than even my laptop camera <laughs> you know what? i'm going to be honest right now and tell you all a secret is that because I, I'm also like a full-time mom stay at home, I, I swear the moment I pull out my laptop, it's like it's like an indicator for my daughter to be like, okay, that's it. I need to I need to do something to like to just like, you know, something to get attention. That's usually how it is. Cause like, okay, it's like the moment you open that laptop, that's when she needs something. Whereas if I use my phone, because I can pretty well everything, a lot of it is mobile friendly. And the thing is I do it in the little times. I feel very productive. But anybody just starting a business and they have a little one at home, that's exactly what I do is a lot of it, I'm gonna be completely honest. A lot of it is through my phone. And I have, I use my laptop in the times when she's sleeping usually, like, or early in the mornings when she's just waking up. That way she's, you know, I feel like it's a bit of balance, but you can do so much from your phone, you can connect with people, you can network with people, you can do that. And if people, honestly, people are on Facebook anyways, you might as well be networking and making money while you're doing it, right? Like mine as well, right? So using that time, but yeah, I do use like my phone a lot in business too. So the point of this podcast is for you to get to know us and how average we really are. (laughs) And so I'm going to create random stupid questions that I don't even know the an- I don't even know what I'm asking. I'm just going to throw them out there and yeah. we're going to answer them. Okay, perfect. So if you <laughs> were on a deserted island, okay. what are three things you would bring with you? Oh my goodness, I feel like I'd die. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my husband already has this all figured out. So I'd bring my husband. That's smart. <laughs> Down, I'm guaranteeing you that my husband, ha- he has a plan and would bring all the necessary items. So I, I would, I'd bring him. And <laughs> if I had to bring other things, I feel like <laughs> that's a tough one. Yeah. That's a good one. The, I feel like, a, what do people usually bring like a, a fire starter. I watched like, you know, those, like those, uh, survival ones. They always have a fire starter. That is is usually important. And like, uh, I've seen people like, uh, the water filter things, like, you know, like water and like filter it out. Like I feel like between my husband, the fire starter and the, the water, so you can drink water anywhere. That means you can cook, you know, my husband can go, you know, get some, some food. I'm just kidding. I can't do. The hunter and the gatherer. 
yeah. <laughs> I can lounge down in the beach. I'm just kidding. But like, but like, that's probably what I don't like. I feel like that's yeah. I, that. what would you do? Well, I think I would bring <laughs> my partner Rod. I, I, I would bring him for two things. One, you know, some entertainment because I do feel like if I was alone on an Island, I would go crazy. I think I'd be okay, but you know, I feel like in order for me to escape, I need to have some type of sanity in yeah. my process. Otherwise, it, then it reminds me of that, like that movie. Is it like Castaway? Castaway? Or yeah, Castaway, where you're literally talking to a ball or something. Like you know, it's like this, like fit, you just miss some some type of contact. So like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, another thing, I think I would bring. Obviously, if I had a choice, it would probably be like a machete or something. So I can cut things down. I can build shelter. You know, I can cut firewood. I can hunt. I'm not going to hunt animals. Let's be serious. <laughs> also, Rod is kind of a MacGyver. And he finds random... I kid you not, we were sitting in a room having dinner. And all of a sudden, he brought out this massive stick and I was like, where did you find this massive stick? And he's like, I don't know. It was just in the corner. We've been in this room for like a year without going anywhere. And I've never seen the stick. So he he's able to find like random things Good. to create stuff. Same with, yeah, so I, same with Jake too. He's the same way. I can walk, I can look into something. I can't find anything. I feel like I'm blind in that sense. Like I'm not good at stuff like that. No, that's the diff. If if I told Rod there's ketchup in the fridge, <laughs> he would look and be like, "There's no ketchup." But <laughs> a piece of wood, too. I I swear this piece of wood was seven feet tall, and it was <laughs> sitting in a corner of a room. And I was like, "How? Where has that? Where did you find this? Like, I don't understand." So like, a seven foot piece of wood that I've been in a room I have cleaned that room and I've never seen it and all of a sudden he pulls it out and so like stupid things like that the third thing I would hope maybe a radio uh, that's a good one too and I would hope if even if I can't communicate and it's just like a one-way radio I would hope that maybe it would be a little project where I could try to figure out how to communicate <laughs> out <laughs> I know I feel like I, I as soon as you ask a question I'm like you're already gonna have this brilliant plan on what to do I feel like it's I, I said it right from the beginning I would be just lost I'd just be loving life for the last I have be. you'd know, be like I'm yes like, we get the sun you'll be tanned <laughs> I know that would be my main focus would just be loving like the last little bit of life that I had because I'm not meant to be on I mean hope I guess like if I'm bringing anything can I just like bring a house like you know, well, like, there were no rules to this game. So. <laughs> I'm like, here we are drinking yeah. water. Like, I, like I can bring plumbing. Like. I, I'm going to bring a whole house with full plumbing and heat, <laughs> air conditioning, a stocked fridge that just always has food. <laughs> there we go. Essentially, let's turn this into an island. <laughs> well, you broke the game. <laughs> but it's genius. <laughs> yeah, figured. See, that is how I, I may not survive with those three things that you have, but you know what? I can think outside the box and bring the house plumbing. What? You know what I should actually bring? What? Sunscreen. Oh yeah, you probably should. You'd be like, yeah, like heat stroke or something. Like, oh, I, I would be burnt to a crisp. <laughs> I know. It's amazing how fast you can burn you need to that would cover your three items you need to bring three bottles at least of sunscreen <laughs> yeah, that's true <laughs> or just one big bottle like you're getting creative just combine like just bring like a whole jug and just like combine. Uh, you know what i mean i feel like maybe with my knife though i could just create constant shelter so like oh. a nice gazebo maybe create a little Maybe create like a little umbrella I can carry around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, just bring an umbrella. Okay, my other question is, okay. if anybody could, if any actor or actress could play you in a movie, who would you want to play you? Oh, 100% Jennifer Aniston. Oh, yes. <laughs> she, for one, is gorgeous. I've seen like a picture of her 
it's like I don't think she ages for one no, thing. Like, she, does she doesn't at all. And I like I just I would like she's just so funny. Like I just I love her in Friends for one. She just like I love her. She just, I I feel like that's a good pick for you. That's a great. I, no, pick. I feel like yeah. I feel like and she does. I feel kind of she reminds me of me a little bit. Like only in the sense of like her friends character. <laughs> I know her I feel like I know her personally we call each other every day it's fine <laughs> her best friends you know I feel like I but really even in her interviews friends. and the things I do know of her which again it's only what I see in tabloids which is never anything to believe but she yeah. always seems like a very kind genuine no I was thinking that too who would you have I feel like I would go with Sandra Bullock really <laughs> yeah I don't know. There was somebody, I wish I kind of remember. There was somebody not too long ago where I was watching them in a movie and I was like, that would be the person. But for some reason, I, I'm thinking Sandra Bullock. That's funny. But like, <laughs> I could see it too. Like, I could. I, mean, I just think she's hilarious. She is. She is so funny. Yeah. And you are hilarious too. So I can see that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. What was the next question? Okay. My next question is, if you could speak any other language, what language would it be? Ooh, that's a good one. I feel like, uh, can I I be two? (laughs) Yeah, go for two. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like it would, I feel like I'm I'm deciding between French or Spanish. Mm. So I, I can only pick one and then have like one completely different, like German or something, you know, like, so have maybe like French. Okay. And German, I think. Okay. So if I were, it would obviously be French because, you know, being able to talk to my in-laws would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. Just, okay, I, I get to pick a second one. I'm going to go left field and I'm going to say Mandarin. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that would be really cool to learn. I I can't learn French, so I don't expect... I can learn French. I just, I'm having a difficult time committing to it, (laughs) which puts me behind. But I just think, like, if I'm learning a whole new, new, like, lettering characters, that would be so tough. That would be, like, it would be. It'd be interesting, like... It would be cool. I'd love to speak another language just because it's so interesting. I feel like I would, I feel like I'd always talk to your partner in in, Fran- in French. I feel like just because of like, hey, like I feel like I would. I'm like, hey, you could probably drive me crazy. But like, yeah, true. Right? Like, but I, I love, that'd be cool. Yeah, I think that would be, I would love to be able to speak multiple languages. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I've always, like, I should add, it to, we should add it to our bucket list of things to do to learn another language yeah I am working on it I yeah I I am <laughs> <laughs> you're closer than me slowly but surely I'm getting there <laughs> I, th- I really feel like the whole thing is confidence because the longer I go without speaking the language I tell myself I can't speak it but as soon as I pick up the app and I go through the practices I have no problem doing it I feel like it's just the confidence of it being so long it's like well I don't remember anything that was so long ago okay so if you were to if would you want us if you were to say a sentence do you know a sentence like in French I I know sentences yeah <laughs> so if you say it what what sentence do you know um put me on the spot Chelsea <laughs> it's tough coming up with this is honestly something I've always struggled with because mm-hmm. I can think of sentences, but to think of the words to use, it's just like, that's where or I get just going. a word, I guess. Cause then just like, a no, sentence. I'm going for a sentence, you know, let's, <laughs> I can say words all day. I don't, I don't know. Like I wouldn't have no reference if you're right or wrong. So yeah. So I'm trying to I think I, mind, but I, I have, <laughs> uh, je voudrais aller au cinéma avec mon ami Stephanie. Et nous travaillons au France en après 
the pandemic. Oh my goodness. So I did two parts. Oh, great. <laughs> what did you say? So the first Stephanie. part was I would like to go to the movies with my friend Steph. Uh, and then the second thing is we are going to travel to France after the pandemic. Ah, cool. See, that's the thing. I feel like I know more than I actually I was just going to say, I'm like, you said that, like, like, good for you, Chelsea. If Thank I'm you. going to France, it's with you and Rod, for sure. My mother-in-law sent me a video and it's all in French and I tried watching it. My, my ears, I can't hear anything. So even when my partner's speaking English, I have no idea what he's saying sometimes. And <laughs> Yes, a big component is that he mumbles, <laughs> but sometimes I'm like, I, I don't know what you're saying. He's like, I'm speaking English. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. So I feel like the hardest part for me is hearing and comprehending, but uh, she sent a video with subtitles. So I was able to read the subtitles and they were also in French, but I feel like because of those subtitles, I was able to, to understand, understand more. Ah, uh, that's a... That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So next question. Do you have another question? Um, if you could have any animal, any animal in your house, if it's even like an elephant, imagine your house is big enough to hold an elephant. So like your house will accommodate whatever animal you want. What oh, animal for sure be between a horse, elephant, and kitty. <laughs> <laughs> by far I've ridden on a horse on a, a horse too and an elephant they're just so like I just love them I feel like spiritually connected to them like, I'm so drawn so to horses them. and and, and elephant more elephants just cause, like really you know, those like baby elephant videos I just like I just love them like <laughs> they're just so funny like they're just so cute like, yeah baby elephant but obviously, like, I don't want to take it away from its mom. So, like, I'll just have both of them in there. <laughs> so maybe you'll just have a have a house in Africa or something. And, you know, so then they have free range. They can come visit. I know. But two of those other things are very much achievable. You you could have a horse and a kitty. I'm convincing with, my, with, with Jake, my husband Jake, because he, I, I had to convince him on a fish. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just need to bring home the elephant or bring home the horse. Yeah, <laughs> like, just show up with yeah. it. They can't yeah. say no once you already have it. Yeah, that, that is my thought. <laughs> we could do a segment. Uh, maybe not on, a, on a, an elephant, but like on a, an animal. And then that's it. We'll just. Yeah, that's honestly it. what Rod did when we had our cat. He just came home and said, we're getting a cat tomorrow. And I was Aww. like, first of all, cats terrified me. I okay here we're going to story time <laughs> okay I'm cats story time. hated me really? more specifically my grandmother's cat was the worst with me so my grandma's house was very old very old creaky the house alone terrified me but when you wanted to go to the washroom the only washroom was on the second floor so when we went to visit all the adults would be sitting on the main floor and I would cry to my mom when I had to go to the washroom Aww. because I was so scared to go up, up the stairs. And my, my family's like, just, just go to the washroom, Chelsea. Like, you're fine. I would literally go up the stairs and I would have to run across the hall to the washroom because that cat knew every time I was going up the stairs and it would chase me every single time. And years later my family tells me about how they would sit there and listen to me run and then he they would hear the cat run after me and like this cat I swear was always out to get me it it only actually attacked me once and it was Christmas Eve and I had cat scratches all over my face but this cat every time even when I was sleeping over it would chase me into whatever room and I would have to close the door so like that always freaked me out because my only real interaction with cats was, was the that. evil one yeah that's fair enough yeah so then and the idea of you getting a cat was probably yeah. terrifying and I've always been around dogs so it's like I know dogs I don't know cats they freak me out so 
he's like, we're getting a cat tomorrow. My friend's cat had kittens and now she's trying to find homes for them. So I said, we're taking one. (laughs) And I was so thankful he did because the love I had for this cat was incredible. (laughs) And, And I even remember in our apartment, I, we, uh, so I, if I took the elevator up, she would always know when I'm home and she would come sit at the door until I got in and then she would meow and like greet me at the door. So I always told Rod, you know, this cat I'm okay with cause she's part dog and like she can play fetch and you know, she'll snuggle, <laughs> but she greets me at the door. And that's what I love about dogs is that they're just Aww. excited to see you. So cute. But if I were to able, if I was able to have mm. any pet, I think I would have an otter because I think otters are hilarious Ooh, and I think they're adorable. They are so cute. That's a good one. If what animal do you think you would be if you were an animal? Like what, what animal represents you? <laughs> That's a good one. If I were an animal, I feel like I'd be like a golden retriever or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just because, if I was a dog I feel like I'd be a golden retriever yeah I just like even just the, like I don't know I feel like just always happy all like yeah you know friendly like, yeah like that's I don't know if any other animal really I would definitely be a goat <laughs> I said I called my husband <laughs> <laughs> we had this conversation I was like if you were I told him this I'm like if you were an animal you'd be a goat and your funny. husband would also be a goat yeah my husband yeah I told him that so because <laughs> you guys think a lot alike so I just feel like that's really funny <laughs> I just think goats are so funny I know see that is what that was- <laughs> I could see you as a goat too you and I like- also find goats are, are secretly funny. intelligent too yeah, they're like I love them. You can stand on a tree branch. Like, how do you know how to climb trees in the first place? Can we talk about that? Yeah, I know. And like, they're so, they are so funny. Like, they're hilarious. Like, that's why I feel like that's why I call them a goat. I'm like, would like, your husband also agree that he would be a goat? Uh, like, or like, did he have another opinion? Jokingly agree. <laughs> <laughs> fully admit it but like he like he could like he realized I've seen I've shown him goat videos I'm like that is definitely You're you so like, funny like so I could like I don't know I could he's half there I think <laughs> what about what about Rod yeah Rod. so Rod we we only because we had this conversation the other day he also agreed I would be a goat <laughs> he thinks he would be a jaguar or a like a lion of some sort like in the cat family but like a strong cat ah that's a good one what do you I could see that (laughs) not I don't picture him being a full lion I don't think he's like the king of the jungle I don't think he even wants to be the king of the jungle I think he wants to be like one of those sneaky ones that are in the background but like you don't know they're there but they're always there (laughs) yeah yeah that makes sense what is your all-time favorite tv show oh you already know this i know i don't even know why i even asked friends for everyone out there friends by far is my favorite by far great show if there was one thing that's a gear one movie or thing in general that's a guarantee to make you cry what would it be Ooh, i don't know that's a tough one because I don't cry very often in movies. You don't really like watch movies though, do you? Yeah, I watch movies. Like, because I know you say you talk a lot during like movies and TV shows. So <laughs> you, when you watch them I, and you talk, are you are you able to do both? No, definitely not. <laughs> See, the like I do watch movies with like with Jake. Yeah, I just, I just talk a lot with other people, but like usually I can like we sit down and usually watch like a movie. But I don't know. What about you? Homeward Bound. Do you know that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do know that one. Homeward, you know when they when they look and they're the golden retriever falls down the hole and he's old and he's trying, trying, trying. He's like, go on without me. 
Oh. gets me and then all of a sudden the family's like i don't think he made it because they the family knows he's oh, also an old dog and, like, and then he comes running over that mountain <laughs> it's just guaranteed waterworks oh that's really that's that and also the titanic when the musicians are like it was a pleasure playing with you and they just keep playing playing guaranteed to make me cry <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if i have like a guaranteed one i don't know if i do I also want to pause for a moment because I want to talk about this website that you built. You recently redid our entire website Mm -hmm. and it looks amazing. And you coded most of that. So fun fact, Steph knows how to code. (laughs) I do. I remember my very first job. I learned how to code. I remember thinking, I don't know why I'm learning this. And I feel like so many people out there can can probably relate because sometimes you're thinking, what purpose sometimes does this job bring? What? And I feel like sometimes your experience, you'll get to a point where it'll just line up with exactly, it's like, you know, all the knowledge that you need to start your business or to live that dream life that you really want to live. Yeah, that was that moment because I remember being in my very first job coding and I hated it, hated it. I did it for a year and I could just write it out coding this website and I hated it. And I was also the photographer there too. And it was a bit of both. I liked the photography side, but I remember like leaving like, that's it. I'm never going to use that ever again. That knowledge is useless. Like I, I don't want that. Like it's not me. I'll just hire someone else to code it. That's what I remember thinking. And then just like since starting the business, I found it a lot of fun learning how to code and I actually really enjoyed it. Like I really enjoyed like developing like our website. So like, it's, I it love it. It all really comes together. <laughs> I feel like everyone needs to check it out. And I really like, so for those of you that are just tuning in, Steph and I have made a small tweak in what we do. So we did focus a lot on businesses and helping people grow their business, but we also connect with people who, who just want to, be happy in life. They don't want to grow a business, but they want that inspiration or those people to follow to know that things do get better. Because honestly, like I, I feel like a lot of people are always waiting for something. I feel like in order to live your dream life, it really comes down to three main things. Your mind, business, obviously like to grow, like, you know, if you like really, I feel like financially to be or like your career, that kind of thing. And your soul, I feel like the combination of the three, I feel like can really provide you, you can be grateful. I feel like your mind and soul really focusing on that healing your mind, healing your soul, really finding your passion and purpose in life is huge. So that way you can start living your dream life right now. And I feel like when you do heal, I feel like I went through a huge transformation. And I feel like recently I've been connecting with so many people that are just waiting. They're waiting for COVID to be over. They're waiting for their life to get better. They're waiting for all these things. And I feel like that's like, I feel like that was partly why too, like it's been exciting for us that we've switched to add those things because you, yeah, like we're in the middle of COVID right now, but you can still be grateful for everything that you have right now, right? Even if you lose a job, you know, maybe this is your chance to start a business. You know, I feel like when you start shifting your mind into thinking about that and start enjoying what you have, really appreciating that, I feel like it's, I feel like you naturally start to be happier in life because honestly, like life is too short just to like waste it with all, like waste it away, you know? So I feel like when you really start focusing That's why I'm excited. We focus mainly on mind, business, soul. So that way, you know, we can heal your mind and soul, and then we can help you grow and launch your online business. And I feel like the combination of those three is so incredibly powerful. It's like the trifecta, you know, it's that because with business, there is a lot of mindset, but you have always connected with more spiritual people and you do have a natural gift with spirituality And it's something that I've been trying to learn. So I feel like even that is just a unique thing that you and I, it's, we're both kind of going through it, but we have different ways of approaching it in Mm -hmm. a way. We've always naturally been drawn to that, like using our intuition. And I feel like when we've 
I'm going to use an example that we use during tuition and it paid off. And this is why we talk about soul because this is why it's important. So before COVID, we decided we're like, no, we have, we have this strong gut feeling the both of us, we're like, we have to quit our full-time jobs. We need to do it now. Like we need to do it in a month from now. Like that's what we told. That's what we said to each other. I'm like, it's just this, you know, that gut feeling that you get that you're like, I don't know why necessarily. I just feel like I just really have to do it because I remember you wanted to leave a lot later and then all of a sudden, even like your like intuition kicked in to be like, for some reason, my intuition's telling me to do that now. Yeah. And the thing is COVID hit. And then I feel like it completely tra- changed and increased like our success, change our direction, increase our success. And I feel like we would have been so much further behind in our business if we stayed. Like mm-hmm. I think it would have put us behind because we'd be months behind and then who knows if that shift would have been the exact same, right? So I feel like it's situations like that, which why we've included soul and manifesting and spirituality is part of everything that we do, because it is trusting your intuition. It is trusting your gut because we didn't know COVID was going to hit at that time. We did not predict it. We didn't know why some things you don't necessarily know why you have the gut feeling to do something, but if you trust it, like it never leads you wrong. I think it always leads you in the direction that you're meant to go in. It's true. Another thing. So, because you and I, I was always naturally a mindset person. You're always naturally a marketing person, but you and I were also worried about like being trapped in boxes. And I remember you saying this a lot. It's like, I don't want to be known just for this. I have so much more that I can offer. So I remember you talking about that. And even for me, I was like, well, I have all these things that I want to do. I just didn't understand how it fit or how it would connect, but we're always like, we'll find a way. And I feel like by doing this, what you created that website allows us to show all facets of who we are. Exactly. It's really incredible how it comes together in the sense of like, it's still like, we still help, we still help people in so many incredible ways, like different ways. And I feel like you, I feel like it's incredible how, cause it's true. Like I know, like I'm incredible with marketing. I am like, I was able, I'm easily able, like my marketing strategies come easily. I feel like I have like a whole system. I think, and I think it's, I'm naturally gifted in any business to come up with a marketing strategy and it will work. I know that I am gifted in that, but in the same in the same thing, it's like, I don't only want to do that because I've been through a lot of struggles. I, I know I can relate. I like, I can relate to a lot of people. I know how people can overcome like hard times too. And I feel like, and I'm in, I love writing. So I feel like it's a lot of combination of all of them, which is exciting because anybody out there listening, it's like the whole point of creating your business is creating your dream business, one that you really love and you really connect with. So like us, like we shifted a little bit in the sense of like, we did that because that way it's everything that we really want, right? That our, that's what our souls are calling. That's what we're meant to do. Another thing, especially for me. So I love mindset just because my mind just naturally it's incredible goes the way I feel like it needs to in order for me to process information mm-hmm. and I by the time this video is released you would have seen on our YouTube channel that I just released a video talking about how they found a mass in my uterus now usually I I know people that when they hear that immediately their mind goes to the worst and absolutely it is very common like you shouldn't be having a mask but I know it's very common for people to start going into that downward spiral of I'm going to die I have cancer I'm not going to be able to or I'm going to be going through chemo and all these things and you can go down a dark place but I'm also going to be bringing you on my journey so I can share how my mind is actually working and how I keep myself calm in real time and while I'm actually going through those things because it's so easy for me to just tell people things but because my mind naturally does it and I I don't feel like I have had a way to show people how it actually works on myself I feel like this is a great way for me to do that and so because we incorporated that mind and soul and that more of that personal side to it I feel like that 
just allows me to do that. Where if we only focused on business, I would have a hard time incorporating that. So that's also why we're incorporating this lifestyle because we can show you more without being very specific on just business. Exactly. And I do feel like you sharing, like ultimately, like you've completely changed my, you've completely transformed my anxiety, my life, my mindset and all that in 2020, I can say like I had anxiety and I feel like to the point of having like panic attacks, that's how bad it was. And you completely transformed how like my anxious thoughts where I don't have them anymore. And a huge part of that is understanding how your mind works. Cause I would, I feel like we've had many conversations to be like, this is what I'm going through. Like, how do you process this information? I feel like we talked a lot about that, like how you process different things. And I feel like learning that and you going through and sharing your story is incredible because it really shows and really helps people be like, okay, this in certain times and hard times, this is what you're, this is what you think, because it is easy for me to say, yeah, like I remember going through a hard time and, you know, I, I, you know, we're sitting here like, right. It's, it's, but it's so much more powerful when you go, like when you record your journey and you go through and share that and tell people that's the power of it. That's how you really like help so many more people. I also feel like it's important because if I say I'm good with mindset immediately, I can tell people like, no, I don't deal with things. I don't have anxiety. I don't have these things. And I feel like it makes it more human in a way too, because I don't have anxiety because of the way my mind works and the way I process information. So if someone were to watch and they might be like, but you don't have anxiety. So you've never had to worry about this. So I feel like by putting myself in to this real life situation and like actually sharing, like, I do have stuff that I'm going through, but I'm showing you how my mind works. I feel like it adds more validity to what I'm saying as well. And in a weird way, (laughs) it does. And I feel like, and I know what works, all the things that you've said, like I have anxiety and your techniques work, like they've worked on me. And I know, like, I know that I can say right now that I don't have anxiety at all for like and I can say that confidently now because it's been a like a little while now not just like a day or two like a good day right like I can say now because I the way it is essentially like what I've learned is if you really focus on how you can help yourself then ultimately like you're that's incredible if you learn how to help yourself in those anxious times like your mind will cut like your entire life will completely transform. And I feel like the best way to do that is to show people through your journey, through all that. So that you can help them and see how your mind works in situations like that. So then if someone's going through that same thing, someone's going through that hard time, they can think those same things because that's what I did when I was going through, like after my son passed away, I going through like even the even if it's a different scenario necessarily yeah. I feel like a lot of times when you're stuck in life when life just knocks you down there's certain questions that you can ask yourself there's certain things that become standard in your head that you can analyze and start asking yourself to help you calm down and when you realize that and when you then I feel like it gets so much easier so even if someone's not going through exactly what you're going through no matter what they're going through I feel like it's relevant to everybody just because you can ask yourself those same questions because I I'm living I'm proof of it like you like I feel like within the year I feel like it was a huge transformation going from more like I feel like panic attacks like I could like actual panic attacks to like none at all like nothing like yeah you've been on a huge journey this past year yeah so like and it's because of you so thank you (laughs) well thank you now let's go back into learning more about us. We took a little detour, but we're yeah. back on track. What song is guaranteed to make you dance? Any shuffle dance one, any shuffle dance songs for yeah. sure. Yo, yeah. <laughs> my, my daughter and I do practice the shuffle dance almost every single night. <laughs> That's awesome. What for about me, you? 
Michael Jackson, ABC. If, <laughs> if I'm at a wedding and I'm just, you know, usually at the bar, that song comes on, I'm running to the dance floor. That's my jam. <laughs> that's awesome absolute it's it's kind of a problem one time I went to the casino and I got this bonus game where they played it and I literally I I I feel like I forget that sometimes people are around and I literally just stood up and started dancing and I was like oh I need to focus on my my game (laughs) (laughs) that's funny (laughs) so I have a question but I I don't know how to word it Mm -hmm. but I'm gonna try okay so what is one thing whether it's now years ago or something where you did and you loved but you were always nervous of telling people and I'll start with my example first just so you have time to think because I know that that's like the hard question okay that's a hard question yeah but I'm going light with this so (laughs) for me I was always like a Disney person. I I listened to musicals. My family was like that Brady Bunch family where we would sing, you know, children's songs in the cars all the way up on road trips or whatever. I love that. Then I met my significant other and he introduced me to the world of raves. (laughs) And I remember when I started going to them, I loved them, but I was so terrified to tell people that I love raves. (laughs) I don't anymore because I'm old. (laughs) Like, I feel like I can't handle them anymore. Plus, I've spent too many times with my partner being the DJ that I've had a booth. So I haven't had to be in the crowd or I've had like a luxury treatment. So now the idea of going to a rave, not that much, but even music festivals. I don't go to like the country music festivals. I don't go to those things. I go to like hardcore, (laughs) not like banger, like the screamo music. That that's not my thing. It's more the electronic music. And I remember when I first started telling people I was interested in that, everyone was like, what? You, you like that? You've, you've been to a rave. And I remember (laughs) I was so nervous and insecure to tell people that. And I, I don't know why, but I feel like that was just like a fun little. (laughs) That's cool. That's cool. I feel like for me, the only thing I could think of that, like before that I hid often mainly like was probably more of the spirituality side to it Mm -hmm. only because I feel like my family is very open my entire family is very spiritual so it's not necessarily with that but in terms of like other people just because like my family's really spiritual they do like tarot cards and they have all these stories and I feel like I really fit in there but I just feel like depending and you you know this some people out there it's it's almost like kind of like a debate in a way it's just like like am I wrong with that I feel like I feel like no you're 100 percent right people either (laughs) believe it or they don't yeah and coming from it's like I I'm living this I I can I can tell you I'm like I've seen stuff I've felt stuff I've seen stuff like you know I I feel like I know it's there so I feel like I've always had that and I feel like I because I know people because some people it's a debate because they can't see it. So they don't believe it. Right. That's the thing. And that that's why. And I, now I'm understanding more that that's okay. That's understandable because it, it is hard to believe when they don't actually see it where yeah. you have, there are two type of people that like, you know, are more intuitive or more like open to that and that kind of thing. And then people that are completely closed off from it. So I feel like that's always been something that I've kind of been something but- nervous a little bit you have a really good point of like people who because they can't see it they they don't feel like they can believe it but that's why children are so fascinating because if you were to talk to any child about the spirituality they would probably believe you more because they're more open-minded to potentially seeing things oh the older you get the more you you shut off parts of your brain that doesn't allow you to see beyond what you can actually see in front of you exactly so I feel like because of that I feel because some people are like nope it's not true it's not like I don't see it so it's not there and which is like it you know they're valid like they're okay like that's their opinion it's you know I accept that right but I just feel like so like I person that has actually like feel like 
has seen stuff. I feel like it's, and feels it. I know it's there and I can tell everyone out there that it is, there's that whole other side to it that, and I can say, even if some people don't necessarily see it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not out there because there are certain people that can pick it up more easily. And they're doing that because they have that connection. Yeah, absolutely. What is your favorite color? I would say turquoise. <laughs> yeah. Or purple. Those are my two. Purple or turquoise. What about you? Turquoise. Of course. <laughs> like <laughs> that is for the, sure. My thing, my thing though is like I used to commit to a color and I would go all in. So at one point, orange was my favorite color. <laughs> and I had like orange pants. I had orange shirts. My my grade eight grad dress was orange. <laughs> like really? Yeah, it was like a peach. And I I remember I was in the states for for a competition, and we went to this outlet mall, and there they had like all these fancy dresses. And I've never been into like dressing up, but I was with a bunch of girls who who love dressing up. So like, let's go in. So I walked into the store. And they all wanted to try something on. So I was like, I won't. But they, they asked me to at least try one thing on. So I looked around the store and I saw this one orange dress. And it was my grade eight year. So I was graduating that year. There's always a dance. But there was this one orange dress. And I was like, I'm putting this on. <laughs> and I put it on. And I remember everyone like, oh my gosh, Chelsea. Like, <laughs> what? And I was like, what <laughs> like have no idea and they like called my mom they're like you need to come to this store and I was like is everything and I, I was panicking I was like is every is everything okay like did I did I do something wrong but this dress actually orange looked really good on me I can see that though like you have those colors that don't look good on a lot of people but then I see you wearing them and it's like it looks really good. So I'm not surprised with the orange. Yeah, it was weird. But then I, I loved it. It was like my favorite dress. Have you ever, I don't know if you did this, but I remember every time I had like a fancy dress, it would, you would wear it once and then it would sit in your closet for years. And you're always thinking, well, maybe someday I'll have a reason to wear this again, but yeah. you never do. Have yeah. you had dresses like oh, that? Oh yeah, this is my wedding dress. I was just going to say when you've been married. <laughs> like you know it's like why do I still have it but like it's like you know you keep it for memories but at the same time it's like you're not gonna wear a wedding dress again like you know like yeah <laughs> you know like so yeah stuff like that that what do people do with their wedding dresses mine's in my closet <laughs> like, I, I that was the same with my mom my mom had hers in her closet yeah just like you put it in your closet until you know I don't know like that's so you feel like <laughs> I don't know. I like. I don't even know what you do with it, except just reminds me of that Friends episode where they're all just having fun in their wedding dresses. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that'll be us. We'll see if we can fit into our wedding dress segment. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, For me, like what else? Even do you just do? trying on wedding dresses. Like I don't want to get married, and also I know I'm currently wearing white usually I feel like white makes me look very very pale so mm -hmm. I do often try to stay away from white so I always wonder I was like how what I just have a lot of questions so I feel like <laughs> that will be a future thing at some point. I know I can <laughs> totally see us doing that <laughs> random things I know if you could give one piece of advice to anybody who is in their darkest moment and they want to do some self-improvement, what would you tell them? I feel like my biggest advice would just be to know that pain is temporary. Know that whatever you're going through, I know it's hard because I told myself this after my, my son passed away and I kept, it was the one thing that stuck through my head because when you're in that moment, your darkest days, you feel like it's going to last forever. Like mm -hmm. you feel like, and yeah, like, but it's only temporary. Like you, even in your darkest moments, you have the power to change your mind. You have the power, like you hold 
so much power in your head. Even if life throws at you some curveballs, you take all the power when even if you're in those situations, you can ask yourself, what is good in this situation that I cannot see? And it's hard in those situations because I've been in them. But when you really start to focus on that, and instead of really focusing on the pain and really, you know, allow yourself to, I do feel like it's also important to allow yourself to process those emotions, allow yourself to feel it, but don't allow yourself to get sucked in by it. There's a difference there. And I feel like when you really start focusing on like on that, I remember thinking after my son passed away to be like, you know what? Yeah. Like I remember that was my, one of my darkest days. And I remember one of the things like, you know what? My health is okay. Like our family's okay. I still had roof over my head. Sometimes it is sometimes in your darkest moments, it is like, feel like you're, you're thankful for stuff, but you're really trying to scrape through. But when you start really focusing on those little things, that's what brings you like the most happiness. So I feel like in those moments to know, like you can do this. Like, even if you're there alone, doesn't matter that you have the power within you to control your situation. I think even like, I've been in situations where it's been like one thing after another and you're just like, so like when you have a dark day, there's another thing that comes at you. Then there's another thing. And it's just like, you do wonder like, when is it going to end? And I've been to a point where it's just like, why is this happening to me? Like, why is it all Mm. happening now? But then I started changing my thinking in those situations to be like, well, I'm glad it's all happening at once because then it's like, we can get this heartache over with, give me the next thing. Cause after like four or five things, you're like, okay, what's next? And your mindset, your mindset starts shifting to be like, well, I've, from my experience, there's seven things so far so what's going to be next and I find from that I'm able to be like if I get this negative stuff over with then it's like I can be happy I I have that room to be happy and the thing of was recently talking to with a with a friend yesterday actually was like I said I'm like hmm, I wonder what's going to be your rainbow after the storm mm. and I feel like when can you know it got her thinking like hmm, I wonder because usually what happens based on experience of so many things happening you're know, like bad thing bad thing you're like oh my god it can't get any worse it can't get any worse and then all of a sudden it changes to be like all of a sudden you're given this incredible opportunity given to you it's like a miracle but it's usually in your darkest moments it's like, it's like a test from the universe. Like the worst, sometimes like the worst, you know, cards you're given out, the better the reward after. And, you know, if you look at it like that to be like, yes, I'm going through the storm right now, but after the storm, there's always a rainbow and you're just waiting for your rainbow. And it's like, then it makes you think like, okay, there is, yeah, it sucks right now, but you literally just need to keep going. And the universe like will bring you that. And you're, I feel like people are a lot tougher then they give themselves credit for. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that's a hundred percent accurate is that even if you don't think you are and you have these self doubts, I think it's so important for everyone to know you have the ability to do whatever you want. I think a big thing is you just need to believe it. And I know sometimes in those darkest days, it's not the easiest to believe. I know. But even just, if you can have one even if you think about it once and say, I have the ability to change this, even if you just do it once a day until you're able to think of it more times a day, that alone has always helped me. I know. And I remember I'd always listen to Eric Thomas after, after my son passed away, I'd listen to him and I didn't believe he's like, you need to repeat to yourself. I am phenomenal. I can, I will, I must do this. And I remember repeating, I'm like, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. But then what started happening was I would listen to it often on my car ride to work. And I'd be like, I can't do like, you know, all these things. I didn't believe it at first, not a single sentence that he said to tell myself, I didn't believe it at all. But then after like, you know, while of listening to it, I would, I remember sitting there and I just, I, all of a sudden in the back of my head, it's like, I'm phenomenal. I can, I must do this. And I'm like, and it's happening without me even knowing it. So even if you're in your darkest moments right now, and you're like, I really can't change my mindset. I can't do anything. 
listen to something, even if you don't believe it at first, trust me, the more you listen to it, if you on your car ride to work, you listen to something, affirmations, Eric Thomas, what like that's who I went to, someone who really inspires you, then I feel like, you know, you start repeating those things in your head. You start really listening, even if you don't believe it, eventually what will happen is you'll just be sitting there at your, I remember sitting there at my desk and repeating these things subconsciously because they're getting into your subconscious. And when it hit that, then that's when you act, that's how you build your confidence. That's how you start believing it. That's when the incredible thing. So I feel like that would be my, also my advice too. Great advice. I think this is a great place to stop. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions that you want to know about us, make sure you comment below. Mm -hmm. We're, we're happy to share whatever <laughs> comes up. We're, we're open books. And if we can prove that we are average people by answering your questions, yeah, that's what we're here for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you like, comment, share. All of that is greatly appreciated. And we'll see you again next week. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.